Well, today I will continue on, on that passage that I spoke last week. In Acts chapter 16, verse 31 to 34. Now I'll go through 31 to 34. Uh, last, uh, last Sunday I spoke only on, uh, based on, on Acts 16, 31. But today I just want to read my, my text. And it will be in Acts chapter 16, verse 31 to 34. And this is what it says. If you have your Bibles with you, you can open it. If you don't, just look at there and you have it. Okay, now we are in the modern technology. And some people would say, some pastors and some churches would say, this, that is not a Bible. Cell phone is not a Bible. But it's okay. Uh, sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it's not. Uh, it all depends on how you approach the word of God. Amen. So anyway, sometimes uh, there's a mis uh, disadvantage and advantage of having your, your cell phone as your Bible. Anyway, it's so, but it's so good if you have a book like this okay so uh, i encourage you to have your own book uh, the bible acts sixteen thirty one. they replied believe in the lord jesus christ and you will be saved you and your household then he spoke the word of the lord to him and all the others in his house at that hour Of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his family were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set meal before them. He was filled, he was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God. And he and his whole family. This is a story of Paul and Silas. A portion of the story of Paul and Silas who was put into prison because of, of their faith and because of, of uh, delivering a girl from an evil spirit. But then, because of what, he, he, because of what they did, because of, what, of their ministry, Paul and Silas was put in prison. And when Paul and Silas was put in, put in prison, there was a big earthquake that happened that night because that night, even though Paul and Silas was in prison, they started singing praise and worship songs. They started singing and singing and singing, and then suddenly a big earthquake came, and their chains were broken, and they were released, the prisoners. And when the jailer saw that, and, 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 the, and, and even the, uh, the door of, of the jail were opened. The jailer wanted to kill himself because he is now in trouble. But then Paul said, we are here. Fear not, we are here. We did not escape. And so when, when that happened, the jailer called for lights and rushed into the place where Paul and Silas was. And there they are. And then the jailer asked, Sir, what must I do to be saved? Wow. Now here we see that the jailer knew that Paul and Silas have a, a powerful God because of what happened that night. That's why on that verse, it's, uh, on verse 31, Paul, Paul and Silas said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Today, I would just want to ask you a question. What does it mean to believe in Jesus? What, 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 do you ha what, what did you do when, when you believed? Do you believe in Jesus? Amen. Well, you would say, yes, okay? We all believe in Jesus. What would you do when you believe someone else? 
I know you have some best friend. I know you have someone that I believe in this, in this guy, right? When you believe in someone, you will listen to what he says, right? When you believe in someone, you would trust them. When you believe in someone, you would listen to his advice. When you have some problems and you have some things that you need to clarify in your life, you would ask, you would ask your, that, that someone said, can I talk to you? Okay? When you believe someone, you would welcome him in your house, right? When you believe in someone, you would, you would, uh, you would just uh, ask him, hey, let's go for dinner. You begin to have a you would begin to develop an intimate relationship of someone you would believe. And then when you believe in that someone, 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 you would share even the secrets that you have. Right? I remember when I was a little kid, I was a teenager. I don't, I don't even cannot, cannot say it to my, to my mom, but I can say it to my, to my best friend because I believe in him. Because we have, we develop an, a closeness that even right now, even at this point, he, he, he never told those, those, those secrets that I have and his secrets that, that I knew. It's just between you and me and him. So, that's when you believe in someone, right? Believing is having faith to that someone else. That's the same thing when we believe in Jesus, in God. Last Sunday, we were challenged to believe in what the Bible says, even when it finds so difficult for us to understand. You remember that? We were challenged to believe in God even if, what? The donkey can speak? What? The sun moves still? That's impossible. We were challenged to believe in Jesus to be saved. God can save and change anyone's life even if it is impossible. Again, as I have said last Sunday that uh, Jesus said, it is impossible for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. That's, that's what Jesus said. It's easier for a camel to enter into a needle's eye. But then, if you go on, Jesus said, well, to, to man, this is impossible. It is impossible, but to God, everything is possible. So it is possible. It is possible even to change us. I knew that we have this difficulty in changing our lives. I have difficulty in changing my life. I cannot change my life. But to me, it is impossible, but to God, Everything will be impossible. Will be possible. Amen. 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 It is possible. You cannot say, Ah, well, I am. You have to get. You have to be used to me because I am like this. But you know what? It's possible that God can change you. Amen. In the course of my ministry, in the course of my serving God. I have some people, I have some uh, students, and I have, I have a lot of friends in, in the Philippines that I said, ah, this, this guy will be impossible. It's impossible that this guy will have a church. This, guy will, this, this, this woman will, will, not have, will not be successful in ministry because he cheats or she cheats in, in my class. I, I'm very strict when I was in, oh, oh, I was teaching. If, if I see somebody, somebody else uh, cheating, cheating on exam, I would call them in my office. And I, I would say, hey, look, see, you have the same answers. 
and you have the same wrong answers and right answers. So what is this? And you are you sit, I I, I you sit uh, you during that exam you sit just beside your sitmates. But there are times that so sometimes I fail my students, and they would come to me, Pastor, can you please pass pass me? I'll give two chicken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they say, "Please, because I we need it. We need my transcript. I I need I need a passing grade. You know, <laughs> you know something like like that." But you know what? And I would say, "Well, God is gracious, so I will be gracious to you." <laughs> <laughs> Even before coming to the United States, somebody came and said, Hey, Pastor, I need it. I need that. I need this. Well, in a way, if God has changed me, God can change you too. Actually, I'm standing here now in front of you because of the change that God did to my life because of my faith in Jesus. I met Jesus. I encountered Jesus that night when Jesus spoke to me in my heart. I decided to serve him. That same night that I encountered Jesus, because you know what? I was a spoiled kid. <laughs> you know it, huh? I was a spoiled kid. I was a rebellious son of my mom. Mm. I mean rebellious, even though uh, my mom was so good to me, everything that I wanted uh, I, I would ask, he would give it to me. I said, uh, I want a ball, a basketball. So uh, we had to go to Manila just, Manila just to get a ball in, right there at Santa Cruz. I remember that Santa Cruz, Manila. And I, he, she would uh, give, me, give, give me a void ball in the, at that time. Void, void, is that void? It is an is the best kind of ball, basketball. I love basketball when I was a little kid, and and so I'm, I'm spoiled. I I I'm not only that spoiled. As a teenager, I explore the world. You know, I am a lazy brat. I don't work at home. You know why? I have a lot. I have a lot of uh, my mom had. I had a lot of uh, peop young young people also like me, who takes they take whom he takes care or she takes care, and they they do all the working and I do all the playing. So I can get what I want. I was I was a leader of a group of young people to cause trouble in the church. We don't want. Our pastor, so I have this group of people, young people, and we rebel against them, you know. But when I encounter Jesus and I believe in Jesus, my life changed. Before, a leader of a group who does bad things, now I became a leader. When, when Jesus changed me, I, I, I became a leader of that, that same group. <coughs> That same group, I became a leader for them. Well, come on, let's go to church. And everybody goes to church. Come on, let's start a basketball team under the church. And we became a, a team, a, a basketball team that, that, uh, that we, we have a name called Peacemakers. Peacemakers. And then the other group uh, outside the church, they call them War Makers. And we have... We have that basketball competition at all times. We lose every time. But then we were together, we jogged together, and we practiced together. 
and we go to church together. After some few months, they could not defeat us. And they started to fight us. And you know what? In the Philippines, you cannot play serious basketball wi without any bet. You know that? You need to have bet. And we don't have, we don't bet as a, as a team. So those outsiders bet for us. <laughs> they bet, okay, you, you have to uh, do it. And you know what? Then we became blessings to other people. Not only that, before, before that group, that, that group that I, 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 uh, that I lead, we sing. And you know what we sing? And you know my, my, kid, my kids know it. We sing. And we sing the Beatles. Hey, June. You know. <laughs> we sing. And not only that, in, in the provinces, we have those, we have those, sometimes we have parties. You know, those uh, parties, especially on December. You know, they're, they're dancing and so forth. And, 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 they would, and they would invite us to sing. You know? But then, when God changed me, we became singers for Jesus. We, became, we began to have a, a group to sing and go to churches. And they, suddenly, they invited us to go and sing there, to go and sing there, to go and sing in other churches. And then we started a group. We started a singing group. And I still remember the best the song that we, we usually sing, and that is in Chronicles. And you know this, you know this verse. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. If my people, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves, shall humble themselves and pray. And then we sing that song, the last, usually I, we sing that song. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king, you know. And people like it. They're, we have become a blessing because God changed our hearts. Because God changed my heart. Now, from drinking wine, as a group before, we drink wine together and then we throw stones to the church at night while there is a service. But later on, when God changed us, we, became, we, we began to be, to be drunk with the Holy Spirit. And that, I can still remember all those things that happened to me. But then, when, when things changed, we don't go there to those places where, where we have happy times. We go to churches. We go to fellowships. We go to youth night in, in different churches. And what a joy is that when you are changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. If God had changed me, and God has changed the course of my life. He can change you too. Amen. He can change you too. He can change even your household. Amen. All we have to do is to believe in Jesus. The Bible says right here, verse 31, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved in your household. Amen. That is a promise. Amen. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You and you will be saved. You and your household. God is going to change that, the course of, of, of your family. Amen. You may have a broken family. You may have a, a family that, uh, that, that, that sometimes a, 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 it's, you just don't understand what's happening. And sometimes you would say, uh, I wish I would have this and that kind of family. But today... I want to share to you what that does it mean to believe in Jesus? What does it mean to believe in Jesus? Based on our text in Acts 16, 31 to 34, there are three things plus one 
three plus one is equivalent to five? Ah, four. <laughs> three plus one that I wanted to share. The first one. Believing in Jesus is listening to the word, to the word of the Lord. Again, believing in Jesus is listening to the word of the Lord. Now, when I was, again, I, I'm fond of music when I was uh, a teenager. Every time I, I go to school and in high school, when I come back from high school, I would take up my, took, take my guitar and started, I, I, I'll sit in front of our house, just uh, beside, on, on beside the road, and I would start it to sing and play my guitar. And suddenly a lot of uh, people would come, a lot of other young people come and, and sing with me. I love, I love those songs of John Denver and, you know, and so forth. Bee Gees, you know, Beatles, and you name it, you know. Victor, no, I don't like Victor Wood. <laughs> you know, and 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 and, peop, and they would come. You know, uh, when when I when I before before when I was God when Jesus had changed me, they would when I'm drunk, I sing better. <laughs> and they would say, when even when others are drunk, they would say, Hey, you you look like the original original singer. Oh, I said, You're only drunk. <laughs> You know what I mean. But anyway, when I sing. And when I, I, I remember that song that I usually sing. Uh, let me see. Hello, darkness, my old friend. You know that song? And what else? Na, 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 na. You are hearing without listening that's that's a phrase that i remember hearing without listening okay hearing without listening now sometimes we hear we hear a lot of things about jesus but we don't listen hello we hear a lot about Jesus, but we don't listen. We, don't, we just take it for granted. Believing in Jesus is listening to the word of the Lord. In verse 32 it says, When they spoke the word, when they, that is Paul and Silas, spoke the word of the Lord to him, to the jail jailer, and to all others in his house. So, here, they listen to Paul. The jailer brought them into his house, and Paul and Silas started to teach. Paul and Silas started to share Jesus, share their faith, share the word of God. The word of God is, what is the word of God? The word of God is the Bible. The word of God is the gospel. The word of God is, is Jesus himself. And you know what? From my childhood, I hear the word of God every day. Stories in the Bible. I know every story in the Bible. Because every time I don't go to Sunday school, and in Sunday school, in Sunday school, what we hear is stories of the Bible. Samson and Goliath. What else? Dave, David. <laughs> Samson and Delilah. David and Goliath. Right? <laughs> now you're listening. <laughs> well, what else? Jonah. Jonah in the lion's den. <laughs> ah, Daniel in the lion's den. Jonah in the and the whale. See, oh, and the fish. Those are those are 
Th those are the, the stories that we have on Sunday school. And uh, stories about Jesus, how he healed this lame man, how he, he raised Lazarus from the dead. Those, we, we heard that on Sunday school when I was a kid. That's, those are the stories. We hear those stories. I memorize a lot of verses. I was a champion of, of, of memory verse when we have a, a, a competition in different churches. I usually have scores of 80 to 80 to 90 verses that I, I, can, I, can, I can recite. But I can do that, but I never listen. I never listen to the message. An example here is Paul. Before Paul got saved, he knew the scriptures. Before, before he encountered Jesus and accepted Jesus, responded to the call of Jesus, Paul never, never listen, never listened to the word of God. However, he is an expert of the law. He knows everything. He knows the prophecy even about Jesus Christ. But he never saw Jesus until he encountered Jesus on that way to Damascus. He never listened to Jesus. He knew it. He knew everything. But never listen. But that one night in my life in 1977, I heard Jesus calling and I listened. While that person preaches on our, on our, on our church and I was a little, I think I was a little drunk at that time. And I was listening to that, that message. There was a singing group that came with him. And I was listening to that message. And immediately the Lord just spoke to me. Bang. And I went, went at the end. Somebody, and, and, and that speaker said, if someone heard the voice of the Lord, please come to the front. And a lot of us came, not only me. Even those people, those young people that I led to do, I lead to do wrong things, came, came and we started, we started to give our lives to him. And he changed the course of my life. Friends, let's welcome and listen to the word of God in our lives. Amen. Let's give God a chance to change us. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a chance to change us. Because if not, you may come to church every Sunday and you are the same old person. You will all be the same person when you go out there. You share the same. But if you give your life to God, if you believe in your heart, God is going to change you. It says here in Romans 10, 9, <clears throat> if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That word salvation means you will be saved. Now, it doesn't mean that you, you will be saved. You know it, that you will be saved. There will be a change that will happen in your life. Because I remember that time when I really confessed my sins and confessed Jesus as Lord of my life. Things, would, things, things change. The next day, I, went, I, I walked. I, I walk to uh, a neighbor where I usually go, and there, there are some of those people who are drinking. I drink with them, and they would say, "Come on, come on, come on, come on, brother, come on, let's let's drink." But that time, I wasn't able to. Uh, I was able to say no. Before, I would say, "Okay, let's let's do it," you know. Okay, I'll get the hot shot. 
at that moment, I never have that desire anymore. Because at that time, God changed me. And he is still changing me throughout those years up to this point. Because I have Jesus. Because I listen to Jesus. And Jesus can do that too in each one's life. Amen. God can do that too. God can, can change us too. Second, believing in Jesus and is saved including your household, is bringing the word in our family. Again, believing in Jesus and are saved, or, or, or and is saved, and you will be saved, including your household, okay, including your household, is bringing the word in your home. Okay? It's bringing the word in your home. It's bringing the word. Who is the word again? The Bible, the gospel, and Jesus himself. Bringing Jesus in your home. When you are here, you have Jesus. Okay? When you go out here and go to your home, where is Jesus? Bring him. Bring Jesus in your home. Amen. It says here in verse 34. Verse 34 it says in our, in our, in our text. Okay. Verse 34. And the jailer brought them into his house. And set a meal before them. Now, he brought Paul and Silas into his house. And. There at, their ho at, at, at the jailer's home, Paul and Silas taught them the word, shared the word. Sometimes we, were, we, were, uh, we are so afraid not, not to share the word of God. Let us not be ashamed. In our faith of G in Jesus. Amen. The word of God is alive. Listen to this. Maybe sometimes it's so difficult for you to share the word of God. But the word of God is alive. It is alive. It, the, the, word, the word there is in, in the Bible is rema. Rema. It is alive. It's so alive. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it says, if you have your Bibles with you, open it to Hebrews chapter 12. What, what does it say in Hebrews chapter 12? Can you put it there? Hebrews 4, I mean, 4. Hebrews 4, 12. It says, for the word of God is living. Amen. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than a double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So this word, which is the word of God, is so alive and it's real. It's not fake. It's not something that it's just another book, but it is alive. It's living. And it's not living, but it is useful. Uh, ha ha have you have anything in your house that is so useful that you keep it and then you always use it every day? What is the thing that is very useful that you have? Right. Cell phone. Right? Nice. Without your cell phone, uh, you cannot contact this and that. It's so useful. What else? It's useful. Knife. Knife. Your stove, right? Or, or the personal things that you have in, in for you. <laughs> so useful, okay? The word of God is useful. 
2 Timothy 3.16. It is God's breath. It's useful for teaching, for correcting. If you wanted to be corrected, go to the word of God. Amen. If you wanted to have direction in your life, go to the word of God. So the word of God is the one that could direct us and give us and show us true salvation. Amen. So bring the word of God in your home. Hallelujah. Bring the word of God in your home. Let the word of God stay in your home. The word of God is truth. John 17, verse 17. The word of God is truth. And you want to know what the word of God is? It will be a long, a long list, a long reading. But I would suggest that you read Psalm 119. Psalm 119 is the longest book or chapter in the Bible. Psalm 119. But there in Psalm 119, it speaks about the word of God. The word of God. The word of God. So rich. That's why Paul said in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of what? Power of God unto salvation to those who believe. Remember that. If you think, and I know not only that you think, but our families need salvation, Amen. needs change. Amen. They need change as we need change. And what is that? The, again, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. It is the power of God. It can change people. It can change the course of the life of a, person's, of a person or of a family. Sometimes you may say that, ah, family, we're okay. Uh, everybody have work. Everybody are okay. They, they are doing good. But you know what? That's not the success that God, that, that we're looking for. The success that we're looking for is when God is with you, whatever comes in your life, you are sick. Because if you believe in Jesus, you will have eternal life. And there is joy in living with Christ. Money cannot give you joy. Right? Money is just temporary. Oh, the success is just temporary. But with Jesus and the success, wow, there will be peace and joy in the Lord. Amen. There will be peace and joy in the Lord. Whether you are in sick in pain, there is joy in the Lord. Whether you will be, you'll be cut here and have this heart removed or, or they would fix it and you have been having some trouble, all things. But if you have Christ, you're happy and you're joyful. Even though it comes, you will go in a wheelchair, this man. Every week, we, we spend two or three days with him. And I would say, why are you happy? I said, hey, you're smiling. How are you? Happy? He would just say, happy. I can just imagine, what? You're being in wheelchair and you're still happy? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So if you are in the Lord, whatever your circumstances is, you are happy. Amen. Whether you're in sick, in pain, or whatever, if you have Jesus in your life, you are happy. Ha happy. <laughs> He's happy. 
Same thing with us, my friends. There's a song that is in scripture. When it's you know, that song that we usually sing during those those early years of uh, 1960s, 1970s, 80s. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So, friends, bring the word of God in our home. Amen. I remember my, 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 my mom. In every top of our house, there are verses. Right there, those are verses. And every year, there are verses. And I still remember that verse because when I was a kid, every day I see it. Early in the morning when I get down, I see it. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro to those, uh, uh, I, I cannot remember. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro to those who love him and so forth, you know. And I said, wow. So the, the word of the Lord is right there. The eyes of the Lord is with us all the time. And, and, and that just, just struck me, you know. Every, 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 it's right there every day you see it. And not only that, there are frames and there are verses. Verses. No wonder I can memorize a lot of verses. So what does that mean when I'm say saying this? What does that mean when I'm saying this? That bring, our, bring the word of the Lord in our houses. I encourage you to schedule some Bible studies in your house. Hallelujah. Amen. No matter what, whatever, don't be ashamed of your house or whatever. Bring your, the word of God in your house. Just like this jailer, he brought, he brought Paul and Silas and they started to have Bible studies in their house. It doesn't matter whether whatever that is in, in your home, but when, there, the, when the word of God comes, the word of God will cleanse our homes and our family. You believe that? I believe it. I believe it. The word of the Lord, the word of the Lord will, will make a difference in our homes and our family. And this will fulfill what the Bible says. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved and your household. Amen. And, th and third, believing in Jesus is being willing. Listen to this. Believing in Jesus is being willing to be baptized. In Acts chapter 16, verse 33, it says, At that hour, in our text, okay, At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately, he and all his family were what? Baptized. He and his family were baptized. What does that mean? What does that mean, uh, that, that word bat, baptized means in this scripture verse? Well, John, John the Baptist, when he started preaching, he preached about baptism. And he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you. And a lot of people came to, uh, came to uh, John the Baptist on that Jordan River, and they were baptized in water. And then in Peter, in, in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, when Peter preached his first sermon ever, and this is what Peter said, 
Repent and be baptized. Repent and be baptized. What does that word baptism mean? Now let's go to the, the meaning of that word baptism. That word baptism, okay, uh, sometimes we don't, some words that in English we don't really understand, right? Baptism. We thought baptism, oh, so they would sprinkle water to us or they would, uh, they, they would uh, emerge us into, into the water. But what that, that, that word, let's look at that word first. That word baptism or baptize means baptiz in Greek, it's bapti original uh, Greek is in baptizo. The word baptizo means to be immersed. Okay? In immersion, being immersed or soaked or put under or submerged. Okay? So submerge, you know, you know what I mean? You understand my English? <laughs> Emerge, okay? So immersion, it, it is, so I, I feel, I just, I just want to share this to you. It is a physical outward announcement, okay? Or a testimony that salvation has come to you, Okay? It's it's physical. It's it's an outward out an outward appearance, showing that you have Jesus in your life. Okay, ba baptizo. Okay, people will see with their own eyes. Baptism, uh, submitting to baptism means people will see with your own with their own eyes the change that happened to you. And you are making this commitment as a symbol, okay, as a symbol of, of what, uh, a symbol showing to people that I am in Christ. I am changed. I am saved. I am redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I'm loved by Jesus. Are you willing to be baptized, being immersed and soaked? into Jesus. The word baptism means being immersed, being soaked, being, being submerged in the word of God, in his presence, in his glory, in his salvation, meaning it is a commitment. It is a commitment that, yes, Lord, I will follow you. I will follow you. It is the show. It is like showing it to the world, that that uh, to not only to the world, showing it to the family, showing it to your friends. What God has done for you. Baptism means to be immersed into the family of God. Okay, into the family of God. First Corinthians chapter twelve verse thirteen says. For we were all baptized into one body by that one spirit. So the word baptism is now you are being immersed. You are being part. You are showing. You are telling to people. You are showing to people. You are giving a testimony to people that now you are a part of the family of God. Amen. Amen. I remember that day when I spoke about baptism. Suddenly, this guy said, let's go to the beach. Why? I want to be baptized. What? So we went. Where did we go? Pismo Beach. And then later on, I, 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 I saw, I, I interviewed him that, he was there, it was there when he was baptized, when he, re, he, he received Jesus, and he was there that he was baptized in water. And when we went there, he wants to be rebaptized. And I said, I cannot do that. No. <laughs> no. But then somebody helped us, some surfers uh, helped us, and, 
he, he was mer emerged into, in, in, into, the, into the water. You know who he is? Brother Lee. Wow. Even though just a few people were there, even though they know what's happening, but it's a commitment. It is, the, the, baptism means there is a physical symbol. But you know what? I will be speaking on this next week because I think on September 16th, I think on September 16, if we, if our our schedule would go through, uh, we would uh, we 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 will be having a a, a water baptism as a symbol. Uh, there's a lot of different kinds of baptism. A water baptism, we have baptism in the Holy Spirit, baptism in water, you know, and baptism into the body of Christ. Uh, but we'll be having a a water baptism on the 16th, right? On the 16th. If we would be having a uh, a pool, and so so uh, we'll be deciding where, okay. So uh, whoever will 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 submit to that, whoever God is speaking to you, you can you can do that, okay, on, on the sixteenth of September. But I'll be speaking on that next n next Sunday, okay. And lastly, and that's number three, right? And I have plus one. Okay, believing in Jesus results in everlasting joy. Amen. Believing in Jesus results in everlasting joy. In, 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 in our text, again, Acts 16, verse 34, and the last part, it says there, here, that the jailer was filled with joy because he had become, uh, he had come to believe in God. And his whole household. What a joy to see. What a joy we would, we would feel if we would believe in Jesus and we know that we are saved and we feel the presence of God. What a joy to see if we would see our whole family serving the Lord. What a joy. So there will be joy if we believe in Jesus. Amen. There will be joy when we believe in Jesus. Never give up. Amen. And if you don't know how to share Jesus, as I have said, let's have Bible study in your home. Not only that. Pray. Continue to pray. Never give up. Just say, Lord, this is your promise. This is your word. This is real. This is alive. This, your, your promises are true. And it will come to pass if you have faith in Jesus. What is faith again? Faith is what? Believing in something that you still don't see, but you, you're expecting it because it is based on the word of God. You knew it, that it is true, and it is going to happen. Whether you like it or not, it is the word of God. It is going to happen if you believe in Jesus. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved and your household. And not only that, it comes with a blessing too. When you believe in Jesus, there's own, not only joy, blessings would overflow in our lives, in our relationships. And God will continue, will start teaching us what to do with our lives. And God would bless us, not only physical, not only spiritual, but what God will bless us even materially all of our needs will be met 
as, as the Bible says, if you seek God first, if you seek God first, remember this, Matthew 6.33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things, what are these things, these things that you need in life, what you eat, what you drink, what you wear, where you live, all of these things will be added unto you. You don't have to make a lot of effort because it will just be added to you if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness in your life. Let us pray. Let us all stand together and let us pray. Hallelujah. Shall we all stand and let us pray. Father, we thank you for speaking to our hearts, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for you are the God who saves. You still save up to this point today, O oh God. You, you are, Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. You still can save, O oh Lord. Your power never fades, O oh God. When you have changed Paul, O oh Lord, you have changed me, O oh Lord, you have changed some of us here, O oh God, you can still change some people right here who need some changes, O oh God. If only we would believe, O oh Lord God. Change. Change us, O oh Lord. Change us. Hallelujah. 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 Let's continue to commune with, with God right now. God is speaking to each one of us right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God.